Hey team, welcome back. Grant Hagen here with Dronapoy, joined with Gary Chapman again. Really excited to talk to you guys a little bit more about a higher accuracy feature within Dronapoy called Ground Control Points and how we can find a little bit more of a creative way to add higher accuracy to the maps that you are capturing with existing information that is given from either a civil engineering file or anything from your AutoCAD team uh, to really help add and enhance some information to get higher accuracy. So Gary is going to walk us through that process. It's a really creative way uh, to do it. And so I'm excited to be joined with him uh, to kind of walk through that. So Gary, tell us what we're going to dive into here today. Yeah, uh, thanks, Grant. Uh, happy to be here again. Um, but yeah, we, we get civil files from engineer all the time. We get uh, a lot of information that we need to process our aerial data um, on that same coordinate system or that same um, uh, local way. Uh, the, the problem there, right, is we get that information from either civil engineer or from our surveyors after we fly uh, the map for, uh, or after we fly with our drones for the initial uh, first flight. Um, and so, of course, the answer to that is, okay, now that we've, for our second flight, let's go put targets out on the ground or something um, and then refly it. So the workaround that we'll look at today uh, lets you uh, take your archived old maps, um, whether it's from two years ago or last year, last month, and reprocess that using maybe recent information that you just got from a civil engineer. Uh, so in this example, we'll, you can see this is um, a plain site. Um, we wanna tie it into this data that we got from civil engineer. And you notice uh, in, uh, in this particular CAD file, the identified coordinate system is a state plane or Alabama West state plane. Um, and that's important to know because that's basically everything that we need to get from drone employee needs to be in that coordinate system to work well with these design files that we get. Uh, so the workaround that I've kind of done is instead of going out there and reflying um, the whole map area, I, I look at the civil file that we got from it, the civil engineer and identify basically areas that has an elevation. Um, you can see in this example, we use these kind of four manholes that you see here on the screen. Um, and if I zoom in to one of those, notice you'll see elevation 617.97. Um, that's important because if I have the elevation shown in the CAD file, I can easily get the, the northern easting or the X and Y uh, in this case from that by simply, and I'm just doing this live on, on the screen. If you hit the ID enter command in AutoCAD, you zoom in and you can pick the center of this manhole. I just clicked on it and you can see it, give, it provided the um, X and Y as well as the Z um, in, in this format. So we take that. Uh, we create a CSV file, which is just in Excel. Um, we take that number and put it uh, in its format. We transform that uh, state plane um, uh, units to meters in this case, because I want to process it uh, on a coordinate system that has meters associated with it, which was, we'll look at here in a second. Um, and then once we take that, we're ready for drone employee. Yeah, this is a really cool way to go about it, because I think the, the fun part here is that uh, the process of putting out ground control points after you've flown it and you kind of established a plan. Uh, in this case, you're just getting more information to really go retroactive and go backwards uh, to add some of that information. So now that we have the CSV file and it's in the right um, kind of format, what do we do with that in drone deploy and what does that look like to start uh, enhancing the map that we have already started to look at? Yep. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So in, in drone deploy, this is a historical map that was flown, uh, flown I think, March 1st, you can see. And the first step that we do is we go down to export and then we go down to source data um, and you export that to yourself. Uh, you can see here, I've already done that. Um, and that takes all the original images. Maybe you don't have the SD card anymore or something, but it takes those original images and gets them local back on your computer hmm. uh, that we'll use to reprocess with. So once we've got that, uh, we simply go to the upload tab, um, go to new upload. We're gonna create, of course, a new map. Uh, and then we're going to just select the photos and uh, um, and let drone deploy bring those in. In this case, I'm just going to select the whole area because I don't want to pick and choose which photo to use. So once I drag them in on the left side, you can see they're uh, they're importing in. Uh, but I don't want all of these, right? I just really want this one area um, here with those manholes on it. So I'm just going to quickly just edit this fence because um, the smaller area that I have, the quicker my processing time will be. So. And again, this is totally up to the user to use every image you have or, or not. In this case, I know those manholes are right in this area here. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to pick that, that kind of quadrant. Then once I pick those images, I ground control points tab here on the left side. Um, you look at step number two. I'm going to choose the file that we just created earlier from AutoCAD, right? 
So this uh, CSV file, I'm going to bring that in. Um, and once I bring that in, it's a really easy way to know if you have chosen the correct coordinate system uh, that Drone Employee uh, pr um, allows you to choose or not. Uh, if you see step three, uh, there's a lot of different, I'm scrolling through here, a lot of different coordinate systems that a lot of people can kind of be intimidated by, like, which one do I pick? Um, a really easy way to know if you have the right one or not is just to pick uh, the one that you pick. Your GCPs should pop in to your screen um, about the right location that they are on the map. So notice that they should be somewhere here where my mouse is kind of moving in the center of the screen. Um, if I choose this one, still not there. If I choose uh, this one, of course, still not there. But I already know um, it's in NAT83 2011 Alabama West uh, meter, right? So when I click that, notice they pop in where they should here. Uh, the four over the manhole in the field and the one over the manhole in the street. Uh, and this background is a Google Earth background, right? So this is not your, your aerial image background. But I know that it's generally in the, in the right location. So that gives me the green light to proceed to the next step. Which is number four, uh, you can see on the left side, tag your GCPs. So once I hit that blue G add GCPs button, it's gonna take around 20 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on um, how many images you upload. You'll get an email from Drone Employee that says your map's ready to tag. Uh, and the last step you need to do is basically uh, tell um, um, basically tell Drone Employee where your CSV file, uh, where, where, what objects you're trying to you know, identify as a control point. Um, you can see here in the screen, these, uh, these are those five uh, manhole rim uh, or, or covers. And I just go as close as I can and, and pick the center. And that's basically going to be my error in my map. How, how, how close to the center of that manhole can I click uh, is going to really dictate how accurate my, my map is going to be. Um, once you identify that, uh, you hit um, confirm your GCPs, it processes. A couple hours later, again, depending on map size, you get a notification that your map's ready. Um, and when you get that notification, kind of the last step, which is really what we try to do in the first place, is bring that data that we got from our drone map from you know a year ago or earlier in the year and bring it and align it to this freshly received information that we got from our civil engineers or surveyors, whoever that might be. Um, and kind of just to, to bring that in, I will just attach, um, let's reattach that point cloud file. So I export out of drone employee this point cloud. Once I export that out, um, it'll pop right into AutoCAD, just as you see here. <laughs> Sometimes here, right? Let me detach, and retach the point cloud. There we go. So now it will pop in correctly. So you can see um, if I zoom in, right? These are um, these are those manholes that I actually use as control points. Uh, of course, there's one more on the street there that I use. But now all of your civil data um, is aligned to you know, near survey grade uh, to any information you might get from external sources. In this case, you know, our civil engineer. I think the cool thing about this is like, man, it really brings that context of the site uh, into uh, civil three or in this case, AutoCAD, right? Um, I think it's just neat to see some of that line work now on a reference site that is in that same coordinate system. Uh, so. I guess, Gary, I know a lot of people ask, like, well, how accurate is it? I know you talked a little bit about some of that earlier, but how in Drone Deploy can you confirm what the accuracy is? I know we produced this um, processing report, and so maybe walk us through some of the important things in here that you really look at to kind of focus on. Yeah, uh, again, another trend that Drone Deploy does, they always give you a tremendous amount of information, right? Uh, in this case, the report that Drone Deploy gives you, it's a um, you know, multiple page report, uh, kind of scroll through, you can see it gives you heat map, a lot of information about your, your image locations, your, uh, just a lot of information, right? But the main, uh, the main thing that I really care about is how accurate is it? In that first page, um, uh, the quality and the accuracy summary, you can see the five GCPs that we provided gave us a RMS error of uh, 0.03 inches, which is really, really, really close to survey grade accuracy. Um, um, and all that's done without having to resurvey the site or go back out and refly it. It's just reprocessing old data with new information. Yeah. And a lot of times people ask to like, how much more accurate can it get? That's obviously going to be dictated on a, a couple different things just at a really high level. It's, you know, how, how high are you flying? How many GCPs do you have that you're using to process? But yeah, I mean that, that, uh, level of accuracy for this size and just the quantity and the height of which it was flown. 
uh, are all really, really good parameters to kind of show. And so that's something that you can kind of see here uh, and really what we're seeing of where those GCPs were located at. So Gary, really appreciate you walking through here. Anything else that we maybe missed that you wanted to add into uh, just before we wrap up? Um, not really. I think the one point that you did make uh, that, that obviously the more GCPs you have, the more you add, the higher uh, and more accurate your maps are going to be. Um, and you can see in this case, best practice would be to have GCPs all around the perimeter, a few in the middle. Um, but because we only really cared, again, this specific example for this, this kind of pond area and some of this civil work, um, it wasn't important to me in this scenario to, mm -hmm. to put you know, 50 different ground control points because I just wanted this area to be really, really highly accurate. And mm -hmm. that's not saying that down towards the end would be, you know, you might look at a half an inch or so difference for, you know, 500 yards away. So it's, it's still pretty freaking accurate uh, and, and really um, excited to, to continue to not have to have checkerboards everywhere, right, uh, before yeah. we fly. Yeah, and it's a really cool use of just taking, I think you said it well, like taking new information and applying it to old maps that you've captured uh, because oftentimes those old maps can be enhanced with some of this information. We just uh, obviously get information at different points in time and really throughout the project life cycle. And so, yeah, just really cool kind of workflow of how to, how to take the information you have now use it back then uh, in ways that you can enhance what you've already captured to see uh, different insights into things. And, and we at Drone Deploy definitely recognize ground control points are a little bit more of a technical workflow. And uh, we're obviously here to help. We wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of your maps and adding uh, higher accuracy and ground control points really is a part to that process. There's some things that it unlocks that uh, could be beneficial for you and the teams. And so if there are questions about that, we obviously wanna be able to uh, take those and really help uh, you in that process. And so obviously reach out to us. We would love to be able to assist in that. And Gary, yeah, appreciate the time. Really fun to kind of see how this kind of all came together and really how you can take this information uh, and bring it to the maps that you've already captured. So uh, appreciate the time. Thanks for joining in with us again today. And we look forward to seeing you in uh, videos to come. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Greg. See you.